My name is Nisha McRae. I'm the founder and executive director of Bajika, a nonprofit organization where we bring our students' ideas to life using STEM. In our past videos, we did some basic edits to a helmet design in Tinkercad and exported our CAD model to Fusion 360, where we've been focusing on more advanced edits to our design. Now that we are all caught up, let's see if we can add a little more pizzazz to our CAD model. In this video, we'll continue working on our helmet design by modifying its appearance and bringing our CAD model to life using the Render tool in Autodesk's Fusion 360. In addition, we'll explore how to use Fusion 360 to make images. Fusion 360 features numerous tools that allow us to improve the quality and appearance of our designs. Whether it's changing our CAD model to feature a unique appearance, like yellow faux leather, or setting the scene for the perfect background to display our CAD model. We can use Fusion 360 to take our CAD model up a notch. Let's get started by modifying the appearance of our helmet design. To do this, we'll need a whole different set of tools and therefore a different workspace. So far, we've been working in the design workspace, which allows us to create and modify solid bodies and components on our canvas. It's the workspace that's most familiar to us due to our prior work starting our helmet model in Tinkercad. In the upper left corner of the window, we'll use the workspace picker to transition to the render workspace. This is an environment where we can create high quality images to communicate our ideas. Whether it's by simply making our models look photorealistic or creating a scene to showcase our idea in practice, I think this will be an awesome touch to help bring our helmet design to reality. In the setup panel, we can see a variety of new tools in the render workspace that will help us create some fabulous photos. Appearance is a tool that lets us change the material used on the body or face, including transparent plastic, metal, wood, and more. It even allows us to change the color of the material, as well as further explore what our design could or would look like in reality. Scene settings is a tool that lets us change the lighting of our design and even the environment we can place our design in to further communicate our idea. The decal tool allows us to apply a simple image on a component or a body, like a logo or text. The texture tool lets us add even more photorealistic details to the appearance of our design. In the setup panel, we can explore the appearance types. In the pop-up window or appearance dialog, we see several folders including library, a search bar, and a list of materials already in this design called In This Design. There are two main methods to add materials to bodies and faces. The first is to select the surface or face of a body we want to modify. Then we'll select a material from the library and drag it from the appearance dialog. Tip. This method only applies to selected material and finish to the pre-selected face. If we've used the material in this design before, it should be listed in the In This Design tab, making it easier to repeat a material on multiple components. The second method to add materials to components and bodies is to highlight the body you wish to modify in the browser. To do this, we select and drag a material from the In This Design or the library folders in the appearance dialog to the highlighted component or body in the browser. This method applies the selected material and finish to the entire body and not just the face. Now that we know how to apply an appearance to a face or a body, we can move on to applying materials to our helmet base. Let's prepare our in this design folder of our appearance dialog with the following materials to explore for our helmet model. Leather, aluminum, ABS, plastic, walnut, and acrylic. Once we have our materials collected in our In This Design folder, we are a go to have some fun. Let's use the first method on the inner curved surface of the helmet's top cap. Let's apply the leather material. Now using the second method on the outer curved surface of the helmet's top cap, let's apply the aluminum. Still, using the second method on both halves of the split top cap, let's apply another material. 
this time from the plastic family, ABS. As you can see, the appearance types can completely transform our CAD models into literally anything. Let's explore this tool a little further and faster. Using method one on both tops of the outer curve of the helmet's top cap split, whew, that's a mouthful, we'll apply the plastic material. On both lower bottom curves of the top cap split, we'll apply leather. On the cylindrical base, we'll apply ABS. On the outside face of the cylindrical base, let's apply plastic. And finally, on the inside face of the cylindrical base, we'll apply leather. And voila, we have the majority of the helmet completed. Now, just for some finishing touches. Here's some walnut wood on the face guard and the bolts of the helmet mount. And to wrap up our really cool helmet, let's select clear acrylic on the transparent lens and the helmet's viewport. Now that we've altered the appearance of our helmet CAD model for Ezekiel, we'll now change the color of a few materials using our In This Design folder. Let's change the color of the AVS components that were white by default. First, select the appearance from the setup panel. An appearance dialog, just like before, should appear with a tab labeled In This Design. Hover over the ABS material in the In This Design folder, right click, select Edit, in the pop up window, select Color Library. In the search bar, let's type in Ezekiel's second favorite color, orange, given that our design has plenty of black already. Once we do this, we'll notice that this will apply our selected orange hue on all previously white ABS materials. If we desire, we can repeat this process with the other materials in In This Design. Now that we've got our render all souped up, let's set the scene, literally. In Fusion 360, you can create the perfect backdrop to give your model context or a photorealistic environment. This helps bring your idea further to life by showcasing our design beyond just a CAD model floating in space. To begin, let's select Scene Settings from the Setup panel. A Scene Settings dialog should appear showcasing various options between two tabs, Settings and Environment Library. In the Settings tab under Environment, there is an option called Background. Select it and change the setting from a solid color to Environment. Tip, this change allows you to see the environment and the background of your model in the Fusion 360 Render workspace. Now, let's move back to the tab labeled Environment Library and scroll while exploring some potential background environments for our helmet. Given we don't want to take away from the helmet, let's select Desert as an environment. However, if an environment is not pre-downloaded in Fusion 360, you must download it before you can apply it to your render canvas. Once downloaded, we can simply double click the render canvas to apply the selected environment and close the environment library dialog. A beautiful CAD model of a helmet? Check. A unique scene for us to show off our CAD model? Check. Now it's time to transform our canvas into a photorealistic image. When we are setting up to render our CAD model, we must treat the canvas as just that, a canvas. The way our CAD model is positioned and lit in our scene is how it will appear in our render. Therefore, we need to set up our canvas for the ideal render. On the bottom of the canvas, you'll notice the navigation bar, which is home to the commands we will use to zoom, pan, and orbit our design to get the perfect shot of our canvas. We can use the rotate command to transform our model into our desired position, as well as the zoom command to zoom in and out of the canvas as desired. Once our model is in the desired position in the scene, we can render our canvas through two methods, in-canvas rendering and cloud rendering. While in-canvas rendering is the fastest method to create a photorealistic image of a design, for the purpose of our presentation, let's use cloud rendering, which uses the internet to produce high quality images of our canvas, and it is quite simple. To do this, we'll select the render command from the render toolbar on the upper left side of the window. A render settings dialog should appear with an option to choose a transparent background. 
This setting lets us make our background or scene invisible if we desire. However, I'm still quite fond of our desert scene, so I'll pass. I'll give our canvas one last glance, just to make sure it's satisfactory, and then we'll click Render. Now comes the hardest part. We must wait for the render to complete. We can monitor the rendering process via the Rendering Gallery in the lower left corner, which displays thumbnails of all of our in-progress and complete cloud renderings. To view our full-size renders, we just click the thumbnail in the Rendering Gallery and download as desired. Look at our helmet. Isn't it a sheer beauty? Now we have a phenomenal, photorealistic image to show to my student Calvin's little brother Ezekiel to make this helmet a reality for them. In preparation for showing off our recent work, let's create some additional renders or images of our current helmet design with unique appearances and scenes. Now, all that's left is getting ready to present our final helmet design, as well as preparing to actually bring this model to life using digital fabrication tools like 3D printing. You're well on your way to becoming a bona fide maker. You no longer need to stay here. Go! Take the knowledge, skills, and tools you've learned here and go make something amazing.